Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. I haven't done one of these for a long time actually, but with all of the tier lists that I do on the channel, I thought it was about time we look at a bunch of champions that I almost never give attention to, but are pretty much always on my radar for being better than people think. There will be loads of these champions. You could argue a case for most of them, so definitely leave yours down below if you think I missed any that I should have talked about. The first one I want to mention is an AD carry, uh, is Ash. Borderline not underrated though, depending on who you talk to, which sounds weird for the start of this video, but she doesn't get enough credit for what she can do in the game at the moment. People forget that she has a base 600 range with a slow as well. Lucian, by the way, has 500. Kaisa has 525. When you match that up against each other, there's this massive difference. That makes laning against an Ash way more difficult. You're not going to demolish the damage charts, so that is kind of one of the drawbacks, I guess, of picking her, but that is okay, though. Once you get your runins, you're going to apply slows to three people with the three bolts. Uh, your Q applies as well. Your blade percentage damage, you even crit three people. So ever since the crit rework, she does spike way harder now. I would say you kind of want to aim for three items. I haven't even mentioned her ultimate yet, at this point so far, but that can be a game changer, right? Uh, to engage, to snowball your lead, really, and you can actually make plays that other AD carries just can't do. In my opinion, she is just a kite machine, and that is one of the biggest things. She's also quite easy to play, so the base level for this is pretty good. Like, you can pick her up straight away and do well. If you remember, Talia was gutted a few patches ago. Well, we kind of thought so, right? Q doing way less damage to monsters, so she can jungle anymore. But the thing is, lane Talia is actually very good, and nobody expects it or has kind of realized yet. You have stupid amounts of consistent poe damage from very high range. You have decent wave clear with that thrown in as well. So you're able to push people in and roam. Roaming with your ultimate is obviously still amazing. This is why she was a pretty good jungler in the first place. You can cut off escape groups as well as trap people. You can even block a team off while you do something like a Baron or a Dragon. One thing that people have forgotten as well about Talia is she does have a one-shot combo. It is insane and I mean insane as well. When you flip people into your rocks and use your Q on top of that as well, it's normally enough damage to just straight up kill somebody. This is kind of where Talia support comes in as well. You have okay poke, but you have these amazing flip combo, which has really high base damage. You can join mid lane fights as well and roam with your jungler and stuff and it's a hugely underrated support. If you just take your mid win rate though, uh, not many people play her, but still she's fighting with the big one. She seems to smash Cassidy and Alessandra as well. Stuff like that that is closer range that she can really bully with her damage that is still insane. So Volley Bear was buffed in 9.2 and ever since has been a bit of a sleeper choice both as a jungler but also as a top laner. The buffs were a massive increase to your damage on your E, changing it to percentage maximum health damage and imagine now every Every champion just has 8% less health to start a fight. That's basically what that means. Your ultimate also kicks in faster and it bounces faster in theory, increasing your damage just a little bit more. And I think that is the biggest change. Volibear is a tank, but he brings a lot of damage. And the reason that works is because of his passive, right? He can actually trade with people, he can fight people, and then he has his massive amount of healing kick in with that damage still bashing away. He's kind of too tanky to kill as a damage jungler, like Elise Sim, for example, but he's also got too much damage himself to kill as a tank. So if you're like Sejuani or something, you can't duel him. He also brings really good engage and crowd control so he can constantly run around the map and be a huge ganker and even mid game be useful. That is a massive thing. He is a tank, but he still brings the damage, right? And I haven't even mentioned at the moment top lane, but they can just run at people. And basically, if you can't 1v1 him, you can't even get close and you can't even farm because he will just run at you and he will kill you. Ever since Conqueror was nerfed, that is a lot harder to fight him now as well, like to fight tanks top lane. Speaking of one that is abusing the new Conqueror though, actually, we're doing a bit of a switch here, but Camille was removed as a jungler now. Her E doesn't stun monsters, but she's actually pretty good as a top laner now, especially with that new Conqueror and the new version of it with the AD, the true damage, and the healing. She was nerfed a lot recently, right, over the last patch, uh, like three times in a row, I think, but the thing is, they were all just a jungle targeted nerfs. Top lane didn't take a hit from any of those at all. She does a lot of true damage, uh, something which I think is a bit more useful now that people can't really get as much from Conqueror anymore, so it makes her a bit more unique, if that makes sense. So versus tanks top lane, or if they're stacking tabby, things like that, it is not that difficult difficult to still build a decent lead and shred people. You've got far superior roams after that to anybody else in the top lane, really, except maybe like Kled or something like that. Your Hawk shot in and then you use your ultimate, then your damage to knock them down while they're trapped. Just think about it, right? Camille scaled like a brute and had some insane damage as a jungler, but that was just in the jungle where she had less gold. Camille top will have more items and more damage, and it seems like she gets punished less now, and that is a really important part. Corky with the new crit rework is an absolute monster if you don't get too far behind. This is almost all about the new item scaling and his passive together working to shred people straight away. You get Trinity Force, you get your Infinity Edge second, so you've got a lot of AD and some really big crits. Your passive then turns those crits into 20% AD and 
80% magic damage, remember. So you can't even really build armor or anything to stop it. It isn't just the crits you've got. Even with the Infinity Edge, you're going to have a lot of sheen damage. And if he has a lead, it's like a three or four shot to kill somebody. And I'm not exaggerating. If you're behind, it's really tough though. But you do have your package, so you can make some plays around the map to try and help that and not get behind in the first place. You can also run Corky bot lane, actually, by the way. A few people have done this, and it's not that bad at all. It's a similar deal, similar situation, but you're able to push harder and burst like a truck. Now, Kalista is my favorite champion. No joke, it feels really weird to put her in an underrated video, but she is finally quite good again and actually feels much better, especially mid-game. Your lane phase is still just okay, in my opinion. Uh, you have the range nerf that was never reverted and the mana refund on your E as well. So that is really bad for trading at lower ranks, but it does eventually go back to normal uh, after you get a few ranks in it. Once you are at that rank five of your rank, it goes away. So it really doesn't matter anymore. You could trade like normal, that's great. And it's still amazing to fight people as long as you're ideally not focused or you're just not locked down with crowd control. You can snowball with your ultimate though uh, if they walk too far forward easy engage very easy to kill as well like they walk too far up away from their tower you throw your support in and you fight it's actually very difficult to focus and kill Callista though if she can auto attack freely she'll hop she'll kite right this meta as well is more about damage and less crowd control which is ideal the issue has always been getting behind feels really bad especially as crit is better now and it turns into almost kind of like a burst at three plus items with 75 percent crit and the rapid fire from really far away but she is still better than most people think she's not a bottom tier AD carry at all if played properly and you can snowball your lane you can get a huge lead and then be very difficult to shut down with a lot of life still we're gonna move into the jungle now Vi is starting to finally get a bit more popular but she is still underrated in my opinion for how good she is you've got a lot of rune choices so you have electrocute for pure burst damage hail of blades help stack your denting blow damage at the start that's actually quite good and not many people use it but aftershock can even keep you alive as you engage her early game is not the best anymore and i think that's the slight issue that you're gonna have if you get a little bit behind or you don't do much then you're gonna feel pretty weak once you picked up your trinity force though that all changes you have your sheen you have your attack speed from that as well and you even have a bit of health serex is even better after that so it's very much about item thresholds but she is going to shred tanks in the game because of her passive and she's going to nuke squishy targets with her burst damage the best part about vi has always been your ultimate it's a very clear go button every like minute or two right so when it's up you go and use it you end up having more impact than others because it is so easy to do overall you've got good engage good damage you can carry yourself in games you're getting aren't too bad but you do farm well uh, you have good objective control as well and you're not as weak as people think at especially a low rank it feels weird to put Kled in this video because I think he's one of the most overpowered champions in the game right now. I swear, honestly. And if people played him more, I think he would actually get nerfed. He's consistently one of the best champions to main. And I always say this because he isn't banned very much. He isn't a thought of as like completely overpowered, but he's pretty much always good. You have an insane early game as well. It's kind of like a new era of Pantheon. Basically, if you remember how he used to bully everybody, that's basically Kled now. It's quite easy to smash his lane phase, but then it's really just up to him to use that lead and snowball the game. He is very hard to play against anyway. You've got a good damage you have your dismount system so it's hard to like judge when you can actually kill him uh you have crowd control you have your damage and your ultimate to run people down your ultimate is actually pretty good because it's not just a way to get kills in lane even though that's really good uh you can roam with it as well but you can also bring your entire team in for the engage this patch even more as well the new conqueror is just insane is brought all of this kind of over the top to a boiling level where i think Kled is one of the best to play i always say this but he is amazing for solo queue people don't understand him properly even now but you do and that is a really big advantage and then you're going to bring some damage Damage, you're going to bring the engage. You can even tank a bit. So he's pretty good in any different game. Kogmo is kind of the reverse of everything we just said about Kled. He's definitely an absolute monster, but once he gets out of the lane phase, if you do get your rage base stacked up though, and you go and you press your W, then you can go nuts and it's kind of like a vein. You get two items, you get your rage blade, you get your blade, and you jump to another level that other AD carries just cannot keep up with, and you're pumping out way more damage. The crit rework is probably slightly better actually, so we can grab like an infinity edge as we go into the game, but you're really playing around that two to three item. I do more damage than you point that's just cogmo on his own but with some protection with a sensor are uh, those champions as well the enchanters were buffed and are really good now that can be the difference between a uh, cog is okay in this game and cogmo is amazing in this game he is definitely a good AD choice in some games because of that but he has his little bit of ramp up time and no mobility so you have to position well uh, or have a support like a ludo or something to get the most out of him in my eyes one of the strongest junglers at the moment is ivan who rushes mobis and then perma gang ivan is basically a support in the jungle and farming isn't really as important to him so he can 
can get away with just running around the map. That kind of means that the ganks come way more than you think and are pretty deadly when they actually finally do with the lockdown. What he really does though is he says you're never going to kill my team. The shields, the root, the knockup, but it's really the redemption, the Athene's healing and the sensor. So what he's going to do is normally give his team a lead, but then he makes that lead seem bigger than it is because it requires even more damage to kill them. I'm trying to think of the easiest way to put this, but basically when a team is ahead, Ivan is the best jungler to have on your team. That weaker team will struggle to win fights anyway just because they're behind and now they have to have even more damage to finally kill somebody. He's a really good jungler at the moment if you can play him or even if you want to. He is such a different style of play. It's a bit weird, a bit more supporty, but it's so good. So I've got two mid laners to round this out and the first one, Anivia, is kind of like, oh, kind of underrated really. I barely see her, but every single time I do, she does well. The biggest issue is the double scaling aspect. It's kind of needed in the build going Rod into Archangels, right? But both of those are not that good when you buy them. Rod of Ages takes 10 minutes to stack and be good. Archangels is however long it takes you, but the point is both of those are way, way stronger when they're complete. That kind of means that Anivia's early isn't very good, but her mid game when they are stacked is amazing and she starts to pound away. Wave clear is one of the biggest things with her. It's better than most after the nerf, so you can stall out this game and it's really good for farming as well, but you have your good burst, your decent damage over time, a stun, and even the zone control from the wall. She definitely takes a little bit of getting used to as a pick because it's a bit different, but I think that a good Anivia is an asset to any team in pretty much any game. So AP Victor is definitely underrated though, because once he upgrades his hex core, he will absolutely annihilate people. We had this tank Victor build for a very long time, right? Once I got nerfed, everybody stopped playing him completely. He does have a lane phase that leaves room for improvement, so that is why you don't see a lot of high level players use this, but in solo queue, you can navigate around that, especially lower down. His wave clear is almost second to none, so that can stall out games if you're a bit behind and you're kind of waiting for those item breakpoints. One of those is Lich Bane. His dueling with that is incredible, and once you've hit your death cap as well, that is where your laser and your ultimate can start to tick for a ton. The way I'd explain it and put it is he basically feels a bit clunky to play at the moment, especially early to mid game, but I think he offers more damage than people ever expect, but he just needs a little bit of a nudge to get there over the game. So those are the most underrated picks that I noticed do well, like every single patch in this season so far, but I never really played that much, so I don't really mention them. Thanks for watching until the very end, and as always, uh, leave yours down below, but for now, I will leave you with the robots.